In this project, we're going to deploy the lightweight Linux desktop environment Mate on Google Cloud. On top of Mate, we're going to deploy XRDP, which allows access to the desktop environment from a remote desktop client. There are several ways this project can be used. One common scenario is deploying it as a shared development environment for a small team. The desktop image we build includes all prerequisites required to clone and build any project on our channel for any cloud provider. The only thing you need to add are your access credentials. Another popular use case is running a lightweight Linux desktop as a jump box into your cloud environment. It's a cheaper alternative to using a Windows-based jump box. We'll begin by provisioning the mini Active Directory instance. This provides centralized authentication for our desktop users. As a part of the AD setup, several sample users are created. Their credentials are stored securely in Secrets Manager. Next, we'll use Packer to build a reusable Ubuntu image that has a desktop environment installed. We'll then take that image built from Packer and deploy a VM instance to test the desktop. Once initialized, you'll open a remote desktop client to the desktop server. At this point, you can pull out credentials from Secrets Manager to start testing the desktop environment. Here, I'm going to log in as Raj Patel. Now let's cover the prerequisites for these GCP desktop builds. First off, there's a video out there called GCP and Terraform Easy Setup. I'll put a link at the top. That walks you through how you create a build identity in the GCP console and extract out the credentials.json you'll need to put in the project folder for the builds. So here's what you'll need for the build. You need that Google Cloud account with a build identity and credentials.json for plugging into the build. You need the G Cloud CLI, you need Terraform, and you need Packer. Now we're ready to build the code. So the first thing you want to do is go back to the, the GitHub documentation and navigate to the download this repository section. From here, copy the git clone command. Now paste that command into your development environment. This is going to download the code and put you in the correct trajectory for the build. So the first thing you want to do in all our projects is you want to run check env. This is going to go check and verify that you have met all the prerequisites. It's going to say, hey, you do not have credentials.json. This is the GCP specific way of providing credentials. So what you want to do is take that credentials.json and put it in the root directory of, of your project. So I'll upload my credentials.json from my laptop. Now when I run check env, it should come back and say, I can log into your Google Cloud account. So the next thing you need to do that's GCP specific is you need to run API setup. This is going to enable all the APIs necessary for this build. It may take a couple minutes to run. Now we're ready to run the apply script. The build takes between 30 and 60 minutes. It's highly variable and most of the time is associated with the Packer build and installing the desktop. As always, if you have any questions on this video, please put them in the comment section and I will answer. The build has completed, so now let's go into the console and take a look at what got built. Let's first take a look at the VM instances. There are three VMs associated with this project. The first VM instance is the Mini Active Directory instance. This is created by the Mini AD Terraform module. You can use this module in your own projects. I'll put a link at the top to that project. Mini AD deploys a Sambo 4 domain controller and some sample user accounts. Mini AD can run on very cheap instances and provisions quickly. It is ideal for demos and prototypes. The next VM instance is the Windows AD admin server. You use this server to manage the users and groups associated with this project and its mini AD deployment. In the demo, we'll show you how to create a new desktop user using this VM. The main event is the Mate desktop instance. We first create an image with Packer, which installs a desktop environment. In the Packer build, we use Ubuntu as the base image and we install the Mate desktop environment, XRDP, Chrome and Firefox, all the prerequisites for building anything on our channel. This includes Terraform, Packer, and Docker, along with the AZ CLI, G Cloud CLI, and AWS CLI. Finally, we install Visual Studio Code and Postman for developing code. Immediately after the build completes, you can go into Secrets Manager and use one of the four sample user accounts for logging into the desktop environment. In the demo, we will log in as Raj Patel. For the demo, the first thing you want to do is run the validate script to get the public IP address of the Mate desktop. So we want to copy that. Then bring up a remote desktop client and paste in the server IP address. From here, we're going to log in as Raj Patel. So we need to go back to Secrets Manager in the console to get the password for Raj Patel. So what's irritating here is the password here, you cannot copy and paste into the XRTP dialog. For security reasons, it does not allow copy and paste. So we'll have to type this manually. Now, once you get in the desktop environment, copy and paste works. It's just the XRTP dialog that doesn't allow it. So I've typed in Raj Patel's password. Once in the desktop environment, we'll take a quick tour of the applications that are installed. Of course, you've got the browsers, Firefox. 
We've got Chrome installed. We've got only Office installed. Only Office is a utility that allows you to open Word files, Excel files, PowerPoint files, and PDF files. We've also installed Postman. Of course, Postman is good for debugging HTTP endpoints and microservices. We also have Visual Studio Code. So in this desktop environment, we've installed everything necessary to build anything on our channel for any cloud provider. So we've installed Terraform, Packer, Docker, and then of course the AZ CLI, GCal CLI, and AWS CLI. The only thing you need to provide are your access credentials to start using this environment to build projects. So we have already uploaded the access credentials. We've done the Azure credentials, AWS credentials, and G Cloud credentials. So what I'm going to do is go to the AWS setup. I can run check ENV on this one. And it's going to go through and say, make sure you have all the requirements and then make sure the connection it succeeds. We can do the same for Azure. Check EMV. It's going to go through and say, OK, you've got everything installed. And then it's going to check your connection into your Azure account. Finally, we have the GCP set up. And the credentials JSON have been put into this root project folder. So now I can do check EMV. And it's going to go through, make sure you have everything installed, and then make sure that you can connect to your G Cloud account. The last application we're going to look at is KRDC. This is the remote desktop client for this environment. This remote desktop client allows us to use this environment as a jump box. Here, we're going to log into the Windows AD admin server. We'll use this client for adding a new desktop user. Now let's walk through creating a new user for the desktop environment. The first thing you want to do is get into the desktop environment, and you're going to, we're going to use this as a jump box. The next step is we're going to go back to the development environment and run validate. And validate is going to give you either the fully qualified domain of the Windows instance or the IP address. So this, you take the uh, domain name here. Let's go back to the desktop environment and let's go to applications, internet, KRDC. We're going to use this environment, like I said, as a jump box. So we want to go in here, we do RDP. That is the, the AD admin box from the validate script. Click on that. And what we want to do is hit OK. And we're going to do R Patel. And we need to go back and get those credentials from Credentials Manager again. So I hit OK. Password from Credentials Manager. OK, so this is the Windows AD admin box. And so what we want to do is I'm going to go to full screen here. And I am going to say, um, first off, we're on the Windows side. And so the first thing you'll notice is there is a Z drive. The Z drive maps the shared file system. What you can do on that is go in there and then go into the project directory and go to utils. And remember, when you add a new Linux user on the Windows side, you have to specify GID number, UID number, and UID. So we need to calculate what the next UUID is. So I'm going to go get next UID. It's going to come back and say, your next UID number for your next user you're going to add is 10,005. And I'm going to bring up administrative tools. Then I'm going to do active directory users and groups. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do view advanced features. So I'm going to go and expand my domain. And I'm going to go to the users folder. And I'm going to say new user. I'm going to call the user Mike Cloud. I'm going to give it a user login of mcloud. Hit next. You need to specify a password. I'm going to say don't expire. Hit next, and it's going to finish. So now we need to go to uh, My Cloud, and we have a couple of things we need to set in here. The first thing is we go to Attribute Editor, and this is where you set the UID number, GID number, and UID. So I'm going to go to the GID number, and we're going to test set that to 10,001. That is the mCloud users group. Hit OK. Then we're going to go back down to UID. In UID, I need to set the user ID of the Linux side. So I'm going to do mCloud, hit Add. 
and then we need to specify UID number. And that's the one that we calculated to begin with. It's 10,005. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit OK. So now we've we've set the required attributes. Now we need to give some group membership. So I'm going to go back to properties here. And I'm going to say uh, member of. I'm going to say add and mcloud users. And let's just call this person in US. And then I'm also going to add and say Linux admins. And this user will also be able to sudo on the desktop environment. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, a quick thing you can test out here is you can go into um, here and say get next UID, hit run. And it's going to say 10,006 because 10,005 is now owned by the mCloud user. So at this point, we're ready to actually log into the desktop. So you bring up your remote desktop client. I'm going to hit connect. So we get the XRDB dialog. So I'm going to do mCloud. And I'm going to set the credential. Or use the credentials I set when I added the user. And there you go. You've logged in as mCloud. If I bring up a shell, I can say ID. And it's going to show you mCloud. you got the GID number, which is mCloud users. Then you have the different groups that I assigned. Since I did Linux admins, I should be able to do sudo bash. And I am now root. So that's the steps for adding a new user into your desktop environment. At this point, after you've uh, played with the desktop environment, it's now time to be a good steward of your cloud accounts. And what you want to do is destroy your project. So you want to run the destroy. The destroy takes about 10 minutes for all the desktops.